Hey everyone, Complex back with another video and today, well today we're back to SWOTOR and we're going to talk about my top 5 favorite tips for new players or maybe you're returning to SWOTOR and like to brush up on some of the basics. So I know that I do have a 5 things that I wish I knew before playing SWOTOR video. That one is from pretty early days from uh, when I had first started playing SWOTOR. I've been playing for a while now, play a lot on stream and learned a few things along the way. So hopefully some of these tips will help if like I said, you're new to SWOTOR or just returning. So let's just dive on into it. Now, this first tip that I have for you is arguably the most important and that is to set yourself up with the security key. Now, if you head over to the SWOTOR website, which is SWOTOR.com, log into your account and then hit the My SWOTOR option. On the left-hand side, you have all of the different options that you can click into. And security key is an option and it is pretty far down the list. Now, the security key is important for two reasons. A, it protects your account from hackers, which is just arguably the most important part. But B, they give you 100 complimentary cartel coin a month for having the security key established. And now on that website, they where the security link feature is that I had mentioned, they do walk you through how to set it up. And normally it is just a mobile app. It's super simple, easy to use, and it just keeps your account secure, which is is really important in this day and age. And not only that though, but if you take a break from a SWOTOR, the cool thing is this feature will still be netting you cartel coin. So if you take a few month break, you come back, there is actually going to be a, you know, a few hundred cartel coin potentially in your bank, which is really nice and really useful because there's always a use for cartel coin. The other cool thing is on the f each of the fleets, there is a security key vendor. And if you've never visited them, you should because there's, I believe a pet, um, amount that you can get from there. There's also the dancer outfit and the gloves, which is something that I, all my characters generally wear because I really like the look of it. There's also, I believe, an exclusive uh, die and everything like that. So make sure you check that out, see what's in there. So then that way you can get yourself not only a secure account, 100 free cartel coin, but also access to a vendor that you might not have seen their inventory yet for. Now, my second tip is the legacy system, making sure that you're unlocking it the moment that you can which is a level 10 and then having left the starter planet slash area, then you can unlock your legacy and get that whole process started. The really nice thing though, is that for the legacy system, you only need one character to unlock the legacy and then well, it's unlocked legacy wide. So then that way all of your characters can take advantage of the system itself. I love how many uh, quality of life perks that you can upgrade to. So definitely check that out. I do have a detailed walkthrough video of the legacy system and just the different things you need to know about it. And I will link that in the description down below. Now, up next, we're going to chat about the companion dialogue system. When I initially started playing this game, I thought it was like a typical Bioware game where however much influence I had with the companion would determine when and how I got conversations with them. Now, that's not the way that it is in SWOTOR. It used to be that way way back when, but since they have changed the system, you now have a companion influence system. And then the conversations that you get with them is entirely separate from that. So the way that you get cutscene conversations with them and you get to learn more about them and everything like that is just through progressing the storyline like you naturally would. Then when you get either back to your ship or maybe you're on the fleet in a rest zone or even sometimes in your stronghold, you'll see a little triangle over their head that denotes that they'd like to have a conversation with you. And then that's when you'll have that kind of cutscene conversation. You can start romances and everything like that. However, the influence system directly affects how effective they are in combat. You will see like approval and disapproval options, just like a typical Bioware game when chatting with them. But the influence system, all that is going to do is just make them more effective in combat. So somebody with a higher influence level is going to be better to bring with you, especially for higher level missions. Now, I do have an entire video that walks you through the companion influence system in more detail. And I will also leave that linked up in the description down below. Now, next up, I want to talk to you about the a character customization system for specifically outfits. I, for one, love being able to customize my characters look down to what they're wearing at any given time. And it's one of the things that allows me to role play a particular character a specific way. And I just I love any game that lets me have an outfit system. This game definitely does. It's a little different than what I was used to from previous games that I had played. So what happens is you can unlock with either cartel coin or just credits various outfit slots for your character. From there, you can put the different pieces that you'd like into the outfit slots for their respective spots like pants, boots, um, 
armband, stuff like that. And then you will end up having to pay a fee to apply it, which will be uh, in credits. And then once you pay that fee, that outfit is there for good until you decide to override it with a different outfit. Now, the cool thing is from there, the armors that you just equipped you can then put into your various storages, whether that's just your ship storage or your legacy storage, depending on if the item is bound to just you or bound to your legacy. That way you can then take certain pieces and rebuild a second outfit. Like for instance, I normally will use the same pants or the same pair of boots, or I definitely use the same gloves, which is actually from the security vendor that we talked about earlier on all of my characters. So I only need to buy it once. I can just put it in all the different slots um, for that respective character because those are unfortunately character bound as opposed to legacy bound. But the cool thing is from there, there is an adaptive gear vendor on the fleet and each fleet has one. That vendor has a wide variety of armors for a wide variety of characters. And all of those are actually legacy bound as opposed to character bound, which means that you can, let's say, find a awesome pair of pants, equip it on one of the characters in your customization slot, put it in your legacy storage, and then use it again on a future character or just another outfit for your current character. I, for one, have a favorite pair of pants that I literally use on every single one of my characters when they're first starting out. It is a, it doesn't have any level restriction on it or anything like that. It's a basic black pair of pants. I actually bought it from the Imp Adaptive Gear Vendor, I believe, and I actually also will use it on my pub characters because they're just a nice pair of pants kind of thing. So it's really cool that you can mix and match your armors. It doesn't matter imp versus pub in that regard. So you can use it, customize your characters as you like, and then also just start to build yourself up a really nice stockpile of outfits that you can mix and match and use in order to create the story that you're trying to tell with your current character. Now, last but not least, we have the interface editor. I know we've gotten quite a few comments about the interface editor in the five things I wish I knew about SWOTOR video and also just on stream. I, for one, have a very specific setup that works for me in my play style. And the cool thing is with the interface editor, I can do that. The interface editor will allow you to pretty much set up your HUD, your interface, however you would like. And there's a whole host of customizations. You can change like the transparency on something. You can change how big just one bar is. You can adjust the size of your entire HUD. So if you're playing at like 1440 or 4K and everything seems either really small or really big, you can easily adjust just your interface overall. You can adjust, like I said, just one or two bars and you can move everything around to fit where you'd like them and what is most comfortable for you. The even better part is that you can then save that to a profile and then load it into any of your other characters. So whether you're starting a new character or you've got a whole host of other characters that you'd like to have the same customization that you've just made, you can easily do that and swap between different profiles depending on what you're doing. To take that even one step further, if you head into the preferences section and then into the key binding, you can actually save the different profiles for your custom key bindings and then quite easily apply that to any of your other characters, which was really handy for me because when I set up the, um, the interface that you see right now, which is like the two bars in the bottom right side, I ended up having to change most of my... Um, my key bindings and how I was going to play everything. So it was really easy to just save the interface. And then that way I could just apply it to every one of my characters and make everything super streamlined. But y'all, that is going to be it from me today. Hopefully this helped if you were having any new player questions or maybe you were just looking for some tips and tricks either as a new player or returning because you haven't played in a while. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments down below or find me on Twitch. I do stream SOTOR a whole heck of a lot and always happy to help when and where I can. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your night and or day depending on where you are in the world. And I will catch you next time. Bye, guys.